if we were to define one of these, we could with a single NAND gate get the other. How can we do that? If I had one of them, if I, if I had implemented either zero or one, I could get the other one using a single NAND gate. How can I do that? Yeah, so we could just do not. If we were to implement, let's say, zero first, one way I could implement one is I could just say NAND of the result of zero with itself would give us not zero, which should be one. And we could do the opposite if we decided we wanted to implement one first. Which one did, would you like to implement first? Do you want to implement zero first or one first? Zero, people want to implement zero. Okay, so how can we do zero? Yeah. NAND AA. And AA gives us not A. And so we can say not A equals maybe NAND A with A. So we can then say return NAND with A and not A. So I, yeah, I think we just did one, didn't we? So one. Okay. <laughs> and then this one can be zero. So in this case now, we can say that zero, we can have, well, well, one is going to be equal to one of A. And then we can, for instance, return NAND of one with one. How many gates did we use for one, which is now on the left? Two. So we used two gates for one. How many NAND gates did we use for zero? Three. So we can do our constants 1 and 0 using at most three gates. There it is written in something not my handwriting. So how is it that we're going to compute any function then? So basically what we can do then is we can just take each of these and instead of saying f of 0, 0, 0 equals 0, we're going to say this is maybe equals 0 of x0 or something like that. Doesn't matter what input we gave it. Whether or not that input was a 1 or a 0, 0 is still going to give us 0 as the result. How many get that? So now once I've done this, I can just put all of those variables into one big long bit string. And then the input variables used as an index tell us what the output ought to be. Because if these were 1, 0, 1 or something like that, then that is going to correspond exactly with whatever bit that was, which is what the table said our output should be when we got 101 as the input. So this is going to implement that function for us no matter what it was. So now we know we can implement any function at all using a circuit, using a, a NAND straight line program or equivalently a NAND circuit or an AND or NOT circuit or an AND or NOT straight line. Yes, because I didn't care what this table looked like. Basically, I described this in a general enough way that any table you handed me, I could convert that into a program. So we could have programs that represent tables in this case. So since we can have a program that does the same thing that that table describes, any table can become any program and any function we should be able to describe with a table. Is this function bijective? No. So just like with, so you mean the mapping from table to program? No, it is not bijective. So just like there are, there are uh, uh, boundless different ways to implement the same thing in Python or Java, there's going to be lots and lots of different ways you could implement the same function in NAND straight line. This just says that for any function you give me, I can always find at least one program to implement that function. But there might be others, there might be some that are going to be more efficient. Like if you tried to do this for, for XOR or something like that, if you use this approach to implement XOR, you would have a lot more gates in your XOR program than you could do if you sort of did it more carefully. But we know that any function we have, I can find at least one program for it. Yes? How do we get two-digit output? This is something that I haven't spent much time on in class, but your book does discuss this quite a bit. Basically, what you would do is you would just say return lookup three as well as if of something, as well as the and of something else, and so forth. So you can just list a bunch of things to provide as output if you wanted multiple outputs. Does that answer your question? <laughs>